Hello and welcome to the Growth Paramed channel. This is the pharmacology class and today we are going to cover aspirin. It's a very common medication used in pre-hospital field, so this should be a very useful class for you. Um, before we begin, we will do a quick disclaimer though. So this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as medical advice. Whilst I always strive for 100% accuracy, errors can occur and medications and protocols do change over time. So please, please do not solely rely on information provided on this channel, but as additional reinforcement to your learning either at paramedic school or on road as a practicing clinician, either at an ENT or paramedic level. So now that we've got that uh, out of the way, let's underline aspirin. And this is gonna be the introduction part of the class. So as normal, this will all be timestamped. So we'll always go with the same format, unless you guys want something different. If you want me to talk about another aspect of pharmacology, such as the pharmacokinetics, please, please feel free to comment in the videos. And if there is enough interest, I will add that to the agenda. But bear in mind that will mean the videos are quite long. And so my main goal is to try and make it as condensed and concise as, as, concise as possible. Hence why um, each section is timestamped. So if you're just looking at the pharmacodynamics, you can go straight to that and miss all the definition and precautions. So we'll first start off with the definition of aspirin, uh, the pharmacokinetics. So how the drug works in the body. And then we'll go to the precautions. And it's gonna be very short, the precaution part, as the pharmacodynamics is gonna be quite long as there are a few effects that aspirin has on the body. And as always, this will be time-stamped. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to, or time-stamp. If you have any questions, please do feel, um, feel free to comment in the videos and I'll make sure to, uh, to read them as I upload these videos very often. So let's head off to the definition part. So aspirin definition. Aspirin is a very common drug. Very common medication. It's quite accessible and often you can easily obtain it over the counter. So accessible. So you'll find uh, if you are going to a patient who has chronic, you know, cardiac conditions and then whatnot and have issues relating to the heart, uh, you will notice that quite a few of these patients will have aspirin already on hand. And if they've been talking to the call takers in the triple uh, zero or whatever, 911 um, centers, they'll probably have been already advised to take aspirin. So that's just something to be aware of as well. So accessible over-the-counter, so very common drug. And it's been used in human history for so long now, I can't even give you a date, but um, it's a very uh, well-researched drug. Um, so over-the-counter. Okay. Aspirin is known as, now this word always gets me, acetylsalicyclic, so acetylsalicyclic. I never, I never truly understand why they're called these really weird scientific names, but this is the main name that it's called, acid. And that's also can be referred to as ASA. Now the underlying principle why we use aspirin is that it is an antiplatelet medication. And for this reason, it is used to treat, um, oh, actually, so it's an antiplatelet medication, but it can also be used to treat, also be used to treat pain and fever. Because the same pharmacodynamics that act on its antiplatelet um, effects, it also acts on the pain sensors, and this effect causes uh, it's a reduction in the symptoms of pain. And we'll go into more detail in the pharmacodynamics, but just need to know that it's an antiplatelet medication and can also be used to treat pain and fever. Uh, for instances such as chest pain, so for chest pain, 
or cutter conditions, it is often the first line of um, management, so first, um, first line of treatment in the management of cardiac issues. And as I mentioned, for most people who do have chronic cardiac conditions or are known to have cardiac problems, they will usually have aspirin prescribed to them by their GP. So most often or not, you'll go to these patients who have cardiac conditions and they would already had administered um, aspirin of their own will. Um, furthermore, with the definition, it is an anti-inflammatory And it has anti pyretic effects. Um, so, anti pyretics, um, so it's used to prevent or reduce fevers. So, it's all about fevers when it comes to pyretics to prevent, reduce fevers. And I'll also, because I'm mentioning that kind of list, I'll also just rewrite antiplatelet as well. Um, how do I spell it up here? I'm, I'm always terrible with the spelling, so I never want to write it unless I know how to write it, you know? Because if you're writing this down and you end up saying it to someone and it's incorrect, then it's a bit awkward. So, yep, so it's anti inflammatory, antiparotic effects, and antiplatelet. So, uh, it's. In terms of the antiplatelets, uh, it also inhibits platelet aggregation, and that is extremely important, again, as I mentioned in the past, for patients experiencing, uh, patients experiencing acute coronary syndrome. Now, Acute coronary syndrome, also known as ACS, is a spectrum of cardiac conditions, and we'll cover that in the medical series. So I won't go through that today. If you already know what ACS is, then awesome. But yeah, aspirin is a first line defense or first line treatment when it comes to patients experiencing ACS. So that kind of covers the definition part of it, these three main things. Uh, and we'll head now to the pharmacology. Now, it's gonna be a bit long, this section, because there are a few things that we need to talk about and its effects. So let me just write pharmacodynamics. Pharmacodynamics. What the drug does to the body. Now aspirin, as I mentioned, has a few usages. Uh, it, it has what's it? Effects on pain and fever. It has effects on platelet aggregation. And this is in relation to the antiplatelet effects. And interesting enough, everyone, it also um, is used in, it has effects on cancer prevention. So effects on cancer prevention. However, I will not cover the last uh, point as only the first two points are relevant to you as a paramedic or ENT in the pre-hospital field. Um, I will add timestamps for these two effects though as it may be quite long explaining the pharmacodynamics. So if you're only seeking the pharmacodynamics of one area of aspirin such as its antiplatelets, then you can just go to that section and not have to listen to the whole thing. So we'll just highlight, I'm only gonna cover these two and I will run through the pharmacodynamics of aspirin and its effects on platelet aggregation first, as that is very important usage in, as it has a very important usage in the pre-hospital field. So I'll go through 
this one first and then I go through its effects on pain and fever. Okay, perfect. So let me just rewrite then. So effects, so pharmacodynamics of aspirin and its effects on platelet ag aggregation. So aspirin, down here, works by irreversibly inhibiting the enzyme known as cyclooxygenase. So it irreversibly inhibiting the enzyme. Oh, enzyme, sorry, known as cyclooxygenase or cyclooxygenase, and this is also referred to as COX one and COX two. Now I'll go down here. Now this inhibition, this effect it has on this enzyme. It's always good to spell it right. So, causes a decrease, so down in formation of prostaglandin precursors. Now I know these are big words, but we'll try and simplify them later on down this track. Precursors, perfect. Um, <clears throat> so why is this important? Well, it's important because by decreasing the formation of prostaglandin precursors, it reduces the synthesis of um, thromboxane A2 for the life of the platelets. And we'll go through that again. So let me just write that down. That was a bit of a wordy um, sentence or point. So important because by decreasing formation of prostaglandin um, precursors it reduces the synthesis of thromboxane A2 for the life of the platelet. Now I'll explain this, don't worry. Don't worry if you're feeling a bit lost here. So thromboxane A2, so think about aspirin. It works on the COX-1, COX-2 enzymes, and then this affects the thromboxane A2. So these are the three things you should try and memorize. So the sacrooxygenase and the thromboxane A2. Uh, thromboxane A2, now let me explain what that is for you so you can understand and kind of put these two together. Thromboxane A2, thromboxane A2 here, A2. It is an inducer. of platelet aggregation. Okay, perfect. And this overall effect forms the basis. Um, so, yeah, so thromboxane A2 is the inducer of platelet aggregation. So by um, inhibiting the enzymes of COX-1 and COX-2. This inhibits um, prostaglandin precursors. And because of this um, inhibit uh, in interference of prostaglandin 
prostaglandin precursors that reduces the synthesis of thromboxane A2. Oh yeah, it's, I can understand it's a bit wordy. So you might have to rewatch this a few times or just keep reading this information. But thromboxane A2 is an inducer of plaque aggregation. So you, you can imagine if you're affecting thromboxane A2, you're, you are in a sense affecting platelet aggregation. So this whole thing, and I'll, I'll probably do it, I'll try and summarize it again for you, but this whole point of of, of this and of, of aspirin is that the overall effect forms the basis of preventing platelets aggregating to exposed collagen collagen fibers at the site of vascular injury and that is a bit of advanced information I'm providing you, but this is important. You understand the importance of this when you learn about the pathophysiology of patients experiencing acute coronary syndrome and atherosclerosis and plaque rupture. So that's all in involving um, when the plaque ruptures, there's vascular injury, and this causes platelets aggregate around it, which worsens um, blockage in the in the coronary arteries or the vessels, and that leads to um, what we know as a heart attack because um, it ends up blocking the whole vessel and that causes uh, the cells past that blockage to die from lack of oxygen. And that's called um, ischemia, but I'm not gonna go through that. That's a bit more on the, uh, the pathophysiology, not the pharmacology, but just wanted to point that out there. Um, let's see, how can I simplify this for you? So the main points, main points from all of this, you might have to rewatch it again, so I do apologize, it is just, just how it's going to be. The main points, though, I want you to get out of this pharmacodynamics is that it inhibits COX-1 and COX-2 enzymes. From here, This causes interference with thromboxane A2. Because what as because of what aspirin is doing to um, COX1, COX2, this is affecting thromboxane A2. So it has a chain effect. No, and let me highlight that as well. Interference. Perfect. This interference prevents further platelet aggregation. So again, this interference. Um, how much space? I don't have much space left. Let's see if we can write at the top here. Okay. Thromboxane. Actually, let's change color again. Thromboxane is an important lipid that is responsible for platelet aggregation. And as we know with platelet aggregation, it can it can lead to clot formation. continuous 
platelet aggregation. That is un, un um that isn't affected by aspirin. So if you don't give aspirin and thromboxane is allowed to do what it's doing and continues with platelet aggregation as it's um, designed for, it can result in heart attacks. Also known as myocardial infarction. Cardinal infarction. And as well as that, strokes. Oh, that was my phone. So that's the, the main effects that it has on antiplatelets. So that's its effects when it comes to antiplatelets and how it affects the, um, the platelet aggregation process. So it's all about inhibiting, 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 and by inhibiting the enzymes, it inhibits um, or interferes with thromboxa A. And because thromboxa A is uh, a big responsible lipid that uh, is responsible for platelet aggregation, then that means that platelet ag aggregation is reduced and that is reducing the risk of heart attacks and, and strokes. So that is why it's used in the hospital field for cardiac patients and for, um, for all those kind of uh, heart conditions, such as heart attacks, uh, STEMIs, so ST elevated uh, myocardial infarction that you, you will see on the ECG leads, uh, but we, will get, we won't get on top of that kind of thing. We're going to move on to next uh, <laughs> the next effect that it has, and this one's probably a bit shorter than the one I just mentioned or one I just went through. So let's look at the pharmaco pharmacodynamics uh, and effects on pain and fever. So let's look at pain first. So as we know, from what we just mentioned there, <laughs> aspirin inhibits COX-1. No, oh, let's change the color, let's keep consistent. COX-1 and COX-2. Because of this, inhib inhib because of this um, effect, it disrupts production of prostaglandins. As well as um, interfering with thromboxate A. Now, what's important about this disruption of prostaglandins? Well, good, good question. Prostaglandins, prostaglandins, Disruption aids in preventing slash reducing symptoms of pain. Uh, and we will explain why in terms of why is prostaglandin inhibita in inhibition is um, will lead to reduction of pain. Well, prostaglandins, glandins are potent substances that can that will that cause headaches and pain when released into the into the um into humans into the bloodstream blah 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 blah, blah. so this substance so remember, prostaglandins are substances. So these substances can increase sensitivity of pain receptors and other substances 
such as histamine and uh, bradykinin. Now you don't really need to know what bradykinin is, you just need to know that these substances, these prostaglandin substances can increase um, the sensitivity of these things. So by aspirin's disruption of prostaglandin production and the resulting prevention of the release of these substances in the inflammation process, it stops actions on pain receptors, so it reduces the sensitivity of pain receptors, um, thus reducing symptoms of pain. So that's the that's the underlying pharmacodynamics when it comes to how it works on pain. So but let me write this. So aspirin's disruption of prostaglandin production leads to prevention of release of prostaglandins so the substances in the inflammation process. Because of this, because of this prevention, uh, may stop its actions on pain receptors, thus preventing or reducing uh, the symptoms of pain. So that's the main underlying things we want to understand when it comes to its effects on pain. Now we'll quickly go on to its uh, effects when it comes to uh, uh, we have fevers, fevers, perfect. Uh, so, <sighs> Aspirin, okay, when it comes to fevers, let me just write this, so fevers. So as we know, aspirin is an antipyretic. Antipyretic, if I can spell that right. Nope, I didn't spell it right. It's um, no R there. Yeah, it's antipyretic. So aspirin interferes as well as everything else that we mentioned, it interferes with the production of brain prostaglandins. And this prostaglandin is known as E1. So prostaglandin E1, guys. Highlight that. Now prostaglandin E1 E1 is is a known and very strong fever inducing agent. And that is why aspirin is, is considered an antipyretic agent because when it is administered, as well as all the other effects it has, it also um, oh, did I, sorry, it also interferes with the production of um, the brain prostaglandin E1. And E1 is a known and very strong fever-inducing agent. Um, I think I for aspirin with the production. Oh, whoops! I didn't write that properly. Let me try that again. <laughs> aspirin interferes. So I was saying in my mind, but I didn't actually put that into. Uh, into writing interferes with the production of brain prostaglandins. So that's the main ones that we are concerned about. We're not going to talk about its um, cancer prevention. Uh, these are the main three effects: so antiplatelet fever and pain. 
And again, if you need to rewatch them, you can easily just uh, go back to whatever section that you felt that you weren't as comfortable with. And again, if you want me to explain a bit more, you can always leave a comment. So we'll head off to the precautions part. We've already kind of blabbered on and actually we're running out of space on this sheet. So let us go with, actually let me just erase that. Okay, perfect. Let's head off to precautions. And we're only gonna talk about one today, even though there are a few. But the one I really want you to be aware of when administering um, aspirin is obvious, and I obvious uh, active slash suspecting or suspected or known bleeding tendencies. Now, why is this, you may ask? Well, because as we know, aspirin is aspirin is an antiplatelet medication. And because of this effect, it can interfere interfere as it has in all the things that I mentioned in the coagulation process. And this means bleeding may take longer to stop. May take longer to stop. Now this is beneficial in the cardiac patient because you don't want those vessels blocking up and causing ischemia. But this is not very good for patients who are who are let's just say a major trauma victim. So those who are there is major hem hemorrhage and there's lots of blood coming out. If you're giving them aspirin, that's only going to make the bleeding worse and it's going to make it difficult to control the bleeding. So be mindful about aspirin. So if they have cardiac pain and they are bleeding out horrendously, <laughs> don't don't go, okay, let's give you some aspirin. Um, try and control the bleeding first because at, at the end of the day, we're always looking at what's going to kill the patient first. Is it that bleed or is it that slight chest pain? Um, of course, you can always give um, GTN. Or even then with GTN, if there's a drop in blood pressure. So, okay, that's a lot of um, things to consider. But basically, I don't want to go into that kind of area because then it just gets very complicated. All I want to say is, if they are actively bleeding or if they have no bleeding, let's say internal bleeding, you see bruising around there that's not really um, explained well, or you don't really know its origins, then just be mindful that if you're giving aspirin, it's going to affect the coagula coagulation process um, because it can reduce thrombin, thrombin formation and the subsequent effect of fibrin production. And that all, and that all is the process of coagulation and it's basically being hindered by aspirin administration. So just be mindful, be aware of patients who have major trauma or are actively bleeding that you're not giving it without proper assessment. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed. That was kind of a very long session and I hope you learned something from it because I tell you my throat is very sore now from talking nonstop, but I hope you guys learned something and I'll see you guys next time. See ya.